What's up guys, Tuga here, back again. This is my Quebec City Nordiques franchise mode. Now, <laughs> it's a shame it's the, still the Quebec City Nordiques because look at all these wonderful contract offers. Washington, Winnipeg, Anaheim, the Bruins. Uh, we have the Blackhawks, the Avs, the Dallas Stars, the Edmonton Oilers, and Connor McDavid. But where are we? Instead, we are with a team that is struggling to make the playoffs year in and year out despite a pretty talented team which is really getting annoying the playoffs though have come to an end the buffalo sabers are your stanley cup champions oh boy so buffalo can turn it around but we can't on the back of jack eichel the buffalo sabers have won the 2019 stanley cup we will quickly take a look at the player stats for our team of course the bracket and the awards and then we'll get into the offseason. We start with the draft. And again, I, I don't know what this team's going to look like. I don't. I have no idea what this team's going to look like at the end of it. There you see the final stats for everybody. I'm not going to read it off because I want to put this season behind me as soon as possible. But let's go ahead and take a look at the league in general. Patrick Kane beats Vladimir Tarasenko and then Ekman Larson is there. If he's available in free agency, I'm getting him. I don't give a damn. I should have I should have traded Vlasic for him. 65. He had more assists than any of our players had points. Just let that settle in for a second. That is just absolutely, absolutely embarrassing. But my God. Moving on to goaltenders. I expect Corpy Salo to be up there in terms of save percentage. I can't guarantee it. But let's take a look here. And he is up there. I see him on the list already. The best starter was probably Jonathan Quick, Schneider, Price, Holpe, Devin Dubnik, Tuka Rask, John Gibson, and then Corby Salah. He only played in 59 games. You know, I gave the backups plenty of chances. So, overall, he had a decent season. Rookie skaters. Let's see if we can get an early indication at who the Calder winner will be. I don't think it'll be Robbie Russo on seven points. Was Evan Fitzpatrick a rookie goalie? And, uh, yes, he was. So I'd say Evan Fitzpatrick has a pretty good shot at being your Rookie of the Year just by default. But let's take a look. We will take a look at the playoff bracket and the awards. The Buffalo Sabres are the Stanley Cup champions beating the Blackhawks in five games. So not too bad there. New Jersey over Carolina in six, or in seven, excuse me, Washington over Pitt. Ah, it should have been us. In the AHL, we know, of course, that the Monsters lost to Chicago in the first round. Chicago lost to Grand Rapids in five. And the Toronto Marlies sweep the Texas Stars in the final. So once again, not a very good year for us. The question is, can we take home any hardware? Any individual hardware would be great. And we'll start at the NHL level. Of course, the Art Ross goes to Patrick Kane, the Hart to Tarasenko, the Norris to Ackman Larson, not surprised. Lady Bing to Patrick Kane. The Calder went to Patrick Line. Did I not sort it by player stats? I don't know. Maybe Line was there. But makes sense giving his point till I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> the Con Smythe goes to Robin Leonard. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how you know it's a video game, folks. Jonathan Quick wins the Vesna. Schneider, the Jennings, the Masterton to Alexiak. The Selkie once again to Getzla. Two consecutive years. Tarasenko wins the Rocket Richard, and the Ted Lindsay, so no hardware there. In the AHL, Michael Dow Call gets some hardware. He gets quite a bit of hardware. Connor Garland's there, someone who, of course, I talked about in the last episode. Alpilka in Chicago. Michael Dow Call again. So for the third straight year, we don't have a single trophy, team-wise or individual-wise, <laughs> to show off. My God, this is getting frustrating. Let's move on, though, to the draft, and we'll see what happens this year. Again, no first-round pick, but we do have 12 picks. Let's see what happens. Once again, I forgot that we have the draft lottery and retired players. Carolina ends up getting the 12th overall pick from us. Calgary wins the lottery. I don't know if they finished in last. I don't think they did. Uh, the owner wanted us to make the Stanley Cup, which is hilarious. So let me... See the retired players already, so we can move on. God damn it. P.A. Parento retires. Hey, at least we gave him a job. <laughs> at least we gave him a job. 
in Cleveland. Yaramir Yager finally retires at 47. Holy shit. 47 years old, he finally retires. Hartnell goes down. I won't read off too many of the others. Duncan Keith, Cronwall. And from there, the name called it. Hey, David Clarkson's gone too. At least he got to finish his career in New Jersey. Johnny Boychuk retires at 35. That is unfortunate. Any other big names? I mean, Matt Hunwick's the biggest name you could possibly imagine. And is that John Scott? That is John Scott. All right, well, John Scott retired. Why, why should we continue this series? So getting into this draft, I'll give you guys a look at the first round. Elite players starting off until uh, Toronto makes the mistake of taking a defenseman. But don't worry, we would do the same exact thing in the second round. Spoiler alert there. But there you get... You get the point. This is a pretty solid draft, including an elite goalie with the 28th pick by the Devils. We get to the second round. Things are going well. The Bruins kind of swing and miss there. And where is our pick? It's right here. We take Jaden Cipher as the defenseman who ends up being low top six. So, yeah, not our best second round pick ever. For shits and giggles, in the third round, we take Tony Maloney. I'm not kidding. He ends up being medium top six. Not planned, but we take a third defenseman. They just so happen to be the guys that seemingly have the best potential, at least at this stage in the draft. We take Ivan Voinov, who ends up being low top four, so he's our best pick yet. In the fourth round, and these will probably be the last two picks I show you guys unless we end up getting a steal, we take Wes McDonald, who ends up being low top nine forward, and Mario Lebruyere, I think, that, at least that's how you pronounce it, I hope, medium bottom six. So we are getting some decent picks, but again, unless we get like a blockbuster, I'm not expecting much, uh, much else in terms of solid picks. Uh, as you see, Montreal took a bottom six guy as well, so I don't know. Let's see what happens. So there you have the draft list. Yes, there are 13 players. I tried to trade 7th round picks at the very end to just get rid of it, and I couldn't do it. Or a 6th round pick at the very end to get rid of it, and it wouldn't let me, <laughs> so nobody would take it, apparently. So we ended up with an extra guy. They're all AHL potential anyway, so who fucking cares? It's a loose guideline, you know? I mean, come on. What's an extra 6th round pick that's just not going to make the team? So I broke one of my rules. I'm sorry, but... Consider that a hey, you deserve a nice little, a nice little break after how this team's been underperforming lately. Which brings me to the resign phase, and what we have to do. Now the good thing is, we uh, we still have some retained salary, but Clarkson and Hartnell retired, which is good. You would think that'd provide a little bit of alleviation. Anyway, Mike Condon, we're gonna let go. Jonas Enroth. I'm just going to sign him again as the backup. Why the hell not? He deserves it. He's still playing well. And as it is, I'd probably have to go out and sign him again anyway. <laughs> Helmerson will leave without a deal for now. Defense. I don't know why it's like that. Well, let's see. Mike Matheson needs a deal. I think he's showing up as a depth guy already. He is. I'm just going to let him go. Trust me. I know his potential and everything. His trade value is rock bottom. He's 25. He's not going to turn into anything amazing. Uh, Ryan Murphy, I think I'm just going to let go of two, and I'll potentially re-sign him afterwards. Uh, Gabe Carlson, we will look to bring back. I can get him for another three years, and we will look to do that. Greg Paterin is on his way out. David Rumblad's on his way out. And if you think letting go of Matheson, and uh, I, I already forgot who we just let go of, Ryan Murphy... I uh, just remember with the goaltenders that they, um, the two goalies we let go of before, they didn't end up being that great eight either. Jesus, English. Good news is Kale Flurry, one of our very first draft picks, is uh, able to be signed now, which is nice. We're going to let go of Ben Thomas. We brought him in for a year as a depth guy, so we can sign Kale Flurry. And is that all we need to do? As you can see, the ridiculous amount of prospects we have because I just haven't gotten rid of of anybody. Tony Maloney, by the way. I wasn't lying. His name is Tony fucking Maloney. Anyway, 
Moving on to right wings, Puglia Yarby needs his first pro deal. It's not like he's earned it. He's been fucking terrible. To the point where I'm only going to sign him for one year. Because I might be trading him anyway. And a one-year salary would make it much easier to get rid of him. Zach Hyman's on his way out. He might very well end up being back. Kevin Stenland, can we get you for three years again on a two-way deal? It looks like we can. Uh, Lind, what's your name? Cal Cole, I thought it was Kevin. Cole Lind also needs his first deal, which, by the way, I hope I didn't accidentally release somebody. I don't think I did. That would blow if I did, but it's too late now. Left wing, Sonny Milano. Good, he only wants one year. That's all I was going to offer him because he might well be traded. Paul Bittner looking for his first deal. He's going to be looking for an NHL deal, most likely. Um, three years? Two years? Oh, man. You know what? Three years at 1.25 is all right because he may end up being on our fourth line anyway. Um, in which case, I'm almost willing to offer him more. Yeah, you know what? Three years at 125 is fine. Gabriel Bork's on his way out. Is there anybody we have to sign? No, there isn't. So then we move to centers. Holy shit. Alrighty. Matt Duchesne needs a deal. Matt Duchesne needs a deal. And, of course, he is looking for a lot of term. Which isn't the worst thing in the world. At 28 years old, I'll give him an 8-year deal. That's fine by me. I'll give him an 8-year deal at 6. Point, I'll even try to go to 6.2. And we'll see if he accepts that. Nick Kerdiles needs a contract. I am more than happy to have him on my fourth line. We'll try to go to 165. Just cheap it up a little bit. Peter Holland is out. Brian Flynn is out. Cliche or Cliche is out. Joe Vitale is out. Gabe Velarde is not. He can be signed his first contract, we ha we may actually have to send him back to junior. He's only 19, which would suck. Krivasic is being signed to his first deal. Noah Suzuki, I think it's Noah. Suzuki is here, and that'll come. So most of these, uh, most of the contract handling here was just getting rid of the veterans that we always bring in and looking to sign players to their first pro contracts, which may come in handy because, again, there might be a lot of turnover. Well, let's see here as we advance days. Matt Touchane is here for eight years. I don't know if he'll even be here for eight years. He might not be around. Who knows? Enroth is back. Sonny Pilato's back. Kirk Dials, Suzuki. It was Nick Suzuki. Velarde, Lind, Flurry, Bittner, Stenland, Carlson, Krivisic, Pulyu, Yarby are all here. Let's double check and make sure that was it. And if it is, with $6 million in cap space, we get to move on to the uh, free agent period, which we landed the big fish last year. Didn't exactly pan out for us, but my God, if Ekman Larson's there, somebody's being traded because I'll do whatever it takes to get my hands on him. Free agency's here. Let's see. Is Ekman Larson here? Please. Please. He's not, but Eric Carlson is. Oh, shit. Eric Carlson, Wayne Simmons, Tyler Meyer, Eric Carlson at 29 years old. I know we had him in Vancouver, but yeah, I might need to go for Eric Carlson. <laughs> I might need to go for Eric Carlson. As far as goalies go, it's not like we need one. Ironically, Sergei Bobrovsky's there, which uh, yeah, is pretty funny. As far as prospects go... Uh, oh, that's who it was. It was Merz Likens and Forsberg. They're still there. They haven't really progressed. Adam Werner's still there, though, which means we could potentially pick him up. How about defensive prospects? Anybody decent? God, the menu system is so slow. Matheson, Nathan Beaulieu, who wouldn't really be worth signing. Uh, we do have this 20-year-old top six, Henry Yokiharu, who was a second-round pick in 2017 by Anaheim. He might be worth going after. And then forwards. Any big names? Nick Patan, but he's restricted. And then uh, we have these guys: Olson, Gostad, Ben Dahan, Whitman. Wasn't he one of ours? Yeah, he was. He was a third-round pick of ours. Shit, we traded him, didn't we? Whitman's there. And then we have bottom six guys who we could just sign the hell out of. So basically, the question is: Do I want to get rid of people and try to replace them 
with Eric Carlson and Wayne Simmons. Unfortunately, Carlson's a righty, which means I'd probably... But I don't want to get rid of David Savard. I mean, he might fill in for Lynn. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, guys. I'll figure it out, though. Dylan Larkin. Is he the answer? I don't know. But I hope he is. We send Hampus Lindholm and Alex Wenberg to Detroit for Larkin. And pretty much all the draft picks this year actually probably could have done better on the draft picks. We tried to get Logan Couture from San Jose. They weren't budging. We wanted to get Nolan Patrick from Edmonton. That wasn't happening due to uh, pretty severe cap trouble in Edmonton, as you can see right now. But don't view that trade as just Hampus Lindholm and Wenberg for Dylan Larkin. I'm making a play for Eric Carlson. I see no option. I am making a play for Eric Carlson. We'll have the money to do it. The question is whether or not he will accept. And I am willing to give him seven years for the cheaper term. And I'll actually keep it at 7.2 just to uh, hopefully entice him a little bit more. We would have three top two defensemen if that goes through, which hopefully it does. That's all I can say. So here's the deal. As we get ready to move forward today, I will show you guys who we have approached because we have approached a handful of players. Obviously, Eric Carlson's the main guy. Then we have our two players in the two out of three bracket. Defenseman Henry Yokiharu, who is medium top six at 20 years old. And then the goaltender, Adam Werner, who falls at low fringe starter. 72 overall at 22 years old, so that's a little bit risky. And then we have the two other, or the three other forwards, excuse me. My God, am I screwing myself on these names, but they're all, we're allowed to sign all of them because they're in the bottom six category. We have Alan Jesus. Yeah, I'm not even trying. Dominic Voleshnicek, though. I can, do, I can try that one. That might be wrong, but it's closer than however the hell I could pronounce that. Lishisharshnik. I'm going to call him Alan if that's all right with you guys. But we have those uh, we have those six contract offers out, and we will see if we can get this done. Now, if Eric Carlson doesn't sign, then yeah, we might be in a little bit of trouble. Just a little bit after giving up Hampus Lindholm. But it's worth the risk. We brought in Dylan Larkin. So overall, I think it's worth the risk. I am kicking myself for not doing a bit better on the draft picks with Larkin. Allen has signed... Adam Werner has signed. Yokiharu has signed. Voleshnicek has signed. Moro has signed. Nothing. Oh, nothing from Carlson. Okay, come on. Come on, we can do this. Please. Please. Yes! 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 For the second year in a row, we signed the top defenseman from the free agent pool, it was fucking Vlasic last year, and now this year, it is Eric Carlson. I'm so fucking happy because nothing has been going my way. I get all six free agents that I want, including Eric Carlson. He goes from the Sens to Quebec City, which is huge. Oh, you just, oh, you made my day, Eric. You made my day. He's coming back home. He was with us in Vancouver, and he comes back home. Home now a seven-year deal. If we get into trouble, obviously Vlasic goes instead. I'm feeling all right. And the Senators actually signed Wayne Simmons, so they still get somebody decent. But yeah, Dylan Larkin. So essentially it became Hampus Lindholm and Wenberg for Larkin and Carlson. Who really won that trade? Even though I could have done better with the draft picks for Larkin, and I'm going to just keep hammering on about that because I really could have done better. Could have had more thirds, maybe another fourth or so. But we'll take a look at the other signings. Henrik Sedin goes to Philly. Zuccarello to Florida. Tyler Myers to Chicago. And we get some of our players in here. Any other big names? Luke Phillip from the Bruins series, if you guys recognize that. Went to Tampa. Nick Patan to Winnipeg. And I think that is it. Four big names. Camilleri to New York. Hornquist to Washington. And our former prospect, Dawson Holt, went to New York. Guys, that will do it for what we can do in free agency. So once again, let me sim to the start of the preseason. I will get our team set up. And then, of course, before we start the sim into the next season, you guys will get a chance 
to give me your input on any last second changes we should make. We have a quick trade to make to free up some contracts. It's Albin Storm, Ryan Vanderbilt, and Vinny Lashivo. Storm's been with us for a few years. I just don't think he's going to make it at bottom six. I have some other guys I want to uh, have and you know to give an opportunity to down in Cleveland. Vanderbilt and Lashivo were signed, I think, each a year ago. Yeah, they were because they would have been on their entry level deals. Regardless, we get rid of them. We clear out some space in Cleveland. We send them to the Hurricanes for a third round pick which isn't too bad, to be honest. Now, guys, you knew there would be casualties moving forward, and this is the first. Brandon Sod is off to the desert. This will make room not only... I'll explain this further when we get a look at contracts. Cap space is going to be an issue in the next offseason, but also this sets up the left wing so that it's Kachuk... It is Dubois, Milano, and then our fourth liner, who you'll see who that is in a minute. So we're going to get rid of Saad. This brings in Chitrin, who right now is projected as a third-pairing defenseman, which means we can trade Darnell Nurse, and then by the time next year where we have to trade Vlasic, because we're not going to be able to afford to keep Vlasic and Carlson beyond this season, that's when Chitrin will step up and replace Vlasic on the second pairing. So we're getting a defenseman for the future. We, of course, had him in Vancouver, which I, I don't like to reuse some of the same players, but this makes all the sense in the world. It is sod. And really, if anything, this this hurts, man. Tony Maloney. You know, it, it's not breaking the guidelines to actually have him as a part of a trade. It would have been breaking the guidelines to just trade him for a second-round pick because we didn't think he was good enough. We also give up a Detroit sixth-round pick from the Larkin deal for Chitrin. This is one of a few moves we have to make, a few big moves. Saad is going to the desert, though. Another trade I didn't necessarily want to make, but it's a good thing that we have to trade Tyler Toffoli because Puglia Yarvi has made progress, and of course we still have Bjorkstrand, and some other players have made some progress. So we send Tyler Toffoli and our sixth-round pick to the Detroit Red Wings, for Hedberg, a defenseman that will settle in Cleveland, and their second uh, second round pick this year, and their third round pick next year. We've taken a lot of picks from the Red Wings with the Larkin trade and now the Tyler Toffoli trade. But another big time domino falls. It is Tyler Toffoli to Detroit. Next up, Darnell Nurse is your newest Montreal Canadian Nurse, of course, who we acquired as a restricted free agent for only a third round pick. We pair him in a 7th round pick next year, and in return, we get 3 picks from the Habs this year, including their 2nd round pick. So a 3rd round pick, so really a 3rd and a 7th round pick, turned into a 2nd, a 4th, and a 5th rounder. That's a good bit of business. Of course, Nurse is going, because we now have Chitron. And our last trade... It's not one that I expected to go through. This is kind of like the Larkin deal, where I probably could have fine-tweaked this a little bit more. But in the end, I'm okay with it. Freddie Gauthier and Kay Jensen, of course, who was the backup defender in Cleveland, who probably would have had starting time this year. But he is paired with Gauthier in this deal. They're off to Anaheim for pretty much all of their picks in this upcoming draft, including the big ones, the second, and the third round picks. And correction, we actually have one more trade. Unfortunately, Matt Mustelli is going to lose his job in Cleveland. We send him to Carolina for a handful of draft picks. So once again, guys, it's time to show you off the team. This is the fourth time we're going into Season 4 in the next episode. 93 offense, 96 defense, 90 goaltending. In the AHL, you can probably tell by the overalls, a much different approach due to the lack of playoff success. I need to show you guys the lineups, trade values, and also our contracts, and that'll be the end of this episode. Starting off, though, with the NHL team, we obviously have some big trades, Saad and Toffoli, along the uh, along the guys that are missing now, Freddie Gauthier as well, and here is why. Top line center is Matthew Kachuk. Huge year for him. It's also the last year of his entry-level deal, and like I said, and like you guys will see, that's a big part of the reason as to why I got rid of Saad and Toffoli. Now, we have Matt Duchesne. He's on that new deal. He's here for a while on a pretty good deal. 
And then it's Jesse Pugliarvi up to an 85 at 21 years old. Elite potential. He had just as much trade value as Tyler Toffoli. And that's why we made the move. It's also the last year of his deal. And he'll be looking for a raise. But he will start off on the top line. Second line, it's a step down. It's not Brandon Saad, but it's a huge year for Pierre-Luc Dubois. Again, though, it's a contract year. We're going with our youth and hoping that they can prove that they belong. 21 years old, low elite. He needs to get it done. Dylan Larkin, of course, here now, 23 years old, a low elite potential. He's on a pretty solid contract for the next three years. And then you have Oliver Bjorkstrand. Again, another guy who really needs to prove himself. He had a decent year last year, in fairness. 85 overall at 24 years old, medium top six potential. Might not get too much better. He's still on a decent contract, though, for the next two years. And then we get to the third line. A familiar face there in Sonny Milano, 84 overall at 23 years old. And keep in mind that some of these overalls are a bit lower than they were because you have players that have taken a morale hit. As you can see, Sonny Milano not too happy with trading away Saad to Foley, Nurse, and Cade Jensen. So I believe he was an 85 overall. And as you'll see, a lot, basically pretty much everyone in the bottom six is about one to two overall points better than they are showing. But anyway, Sonny Milano, big year for him. It's also a contract year. Then, Kevin Stenland makes this roster because we had to clear out the space. Gigantic year for him. I'm not sure what to do again. He's normally an 82. 22 years old, medium top nine potential. Big time year for him. And then the man, the man we traded for Carl Alsner, Stanislav Kaigorodov, is here. 83 overall, actually an 84 at 20 years old, medium top six. That's looking like one hell of a trade. As you can see, the Sod and Toffoli trades took a big hit on him. But if he can bounce back, get back up to an 84, things are going to be looking good. We still have him on his entry-level deal for now. And then on the fourth line, the man replacing Gautier, we have Paul Bittner at an 82, actually an 83. He uh, is, of course, on his new contract and, again, took a little bit of a hit from the Sod and to Foley deals. Uh, Nick Cardiles is still here. Of course, he's down an overall point. Unfortunately, he is on that one-year deal. And then Mats Olsen, still here. His contract's up at the end of the year as well. So that's the real big thing right now, is that a lot of these players have taken a one-overall point hit because of the morale system. But so be it. They're still in a good spot, and hopefully we can bounce back quick and start the season off on the right foot. It's a big year, man. There's so much youth. On this team, the oldest guy on the team is Matt Duchesne at 28 years old. It's all down to youth. It's all down to players living up to their potential. And then we go to the defense. Eric Carlson is, of course, here. He is playing with Seth Jones, who is now a 94 overall and has maxed out trade value, which is insane. Uh, second pairing, though, I mean, this top line or the top pairing, they have to get it done. It's impossible for them to not. Second pairing, Vlasic and Savard could be... Like, I could even switch them both to defensive D, and they would just shut down everybody. That should that has to be a great pairing for us. And then we have Chitrin with Bergman. Again, we traded Darnell Nurse after we acquired Chitrin. After this season, Vlasic probably goes due to that cap hit. We just slide Chitrin right up there, and then we find somebody to play on the third pairing with Julius Bergman. That somebody might already be in our system... Who knows? And of course, the goaltending, it was set up before the end of the year. Eunice Corpusalo is still the man, an elite goalie, on a great contract for the next two years. I think he's actually still a 90. The Again, the morale system taking a hit there. Jonas Enroth still here. I think it's just... The team was a question mark anyway. So why not make it a true question mark with a lot of youth that will sink or swim? And we'll see what happens. Looking at the AHL... We're going with the Vancouver approach. No veterans on cheap deals. We're going with the prospects. Pretty much all of these guys we drafted. Actually, we did. We have Vitaly Abramov on the top line with Gabriel Velarde, who, of course, is now 20 years old. And that was the problem. So many of our prospects came from the CHL. So if they were under 20, we couldn't put them on the monsters. We can now. And Gabe Velarde, who was our first ever draft pick, seventh overall, back when we were the Columbus Blue Jackets, is now here. Cole Lind is the other man. He was also taken in that draft in the third round. He is that right winger. So three players with top six potential on that first line. That's pretty damn good. 
Second, uh, second line here, we have Nick Ralston, a former first-round pick, top nine potential, with Matthias Rodin and Philip Krivisic. So again, another pretty solid line. Next up, we have Wes McDonald, who we just drafted in the fourth round, with Allen, as I'm calling him still. He makes the team, and Gord Henry, who we drafted not too long ago. And on the fourth line, we have Dominic Voleshnesek. Again, I stumbled through that one. I said it right the first time, I'm pretty sure. He is with Sean Morrow. And Nick Suzuki, I'm going to give Nick Suzuki a chance because, as it was mentioned in the comments section, you can't really sleep, uh, you can't really sleep on AHL potential guys. And I'll give him a chance just because one of you guys said that. But we do have a player, Mario Lebruyere, who is ready to step in if we need him. I butchered it that time, too. I said it much better in free agency, but I'm trying to get this information out there. He's ready to step in if needed. But the reason, really, I'm giving Suzuki a chance is because we look at the defense, Ralph Jarrett. High AHL top two. He's up to a 77 overall, so not too bad. The top pairing is Gabriel Carlson and Rasmus Anderson, both who have made great progress. Jarrett is with Kale Flurry. Again, another one of our decent draft picks. Fourth round from our very first draft. And he's, he's looking good. And then we have Tom Hedberg, who, of course, took Cade Jensen's spot. We had to lop him in in the Toffoli deal. He is with Jaden Cyphers who was a second-round pick of ours. So things are looking good. I do like the look of this team. It'll be interesting to see how they do. The goaltender is Sergei Kozinov with Adam Werner as the backup. Werner took Helmerson's spot, which might have been an oversight in uh, on my part. But Adam Werner is here for now. Every position has their backups. Ma uh, Marty Beach is the left-wing backup. Louvriere, I just completely butchered that again, is the right-wing backup. Voinov is the left D backup, Yogi Haru the right wing backup, and actually I think we don't have a center backup anymore because we traded Mistelli, but that is fine. But that is the team. What they end up doing this season, both teams, huge question marks, but we needed to make some deals to really free up some cap space, and I'll show you guys really quick the trade values as well before getting into the contracts and wrapping up this episode. You look here, we have a decent amount of cap open. But you look at some of these trade values. Seth Jones maxed out Vlasic. My God, if we trade him, we're good to go. Like, we have some pretty, pretty good pieces on this team. But then we do have a lot of guys that are really fringe players. And it'll be tough to see just what exactly they can do this year. Corpus Allo as well, his trade value is through the roof. But let me show you the contracts. And, of course, that is the main reason why we made those moves and of course uh forgot to point out we still have the champion tag next to us so hopeful that we're projected to do well as you can see the retained salary will be ending at the end of this season which is going to be helpful we have 14 million dollars in space at the moment that of course will uh go up by 2.5 which will be pretty nice but just look at the players all the rfas we have to sign next year Dubois, Kerdiles, Milano, Kachuk, Olsen, Pulu, Yarvi, and uh, let's see, actually, is the, uh, no, Corpy Salo isn't up. No, Cor whoa, yes, uh, Enroth is up, okay. And then down in the system, we actually really don't have anybody we have to worry about, thankfully. We will have to sign or release quite a few guys that we drafted. We do have Rasmus Anderson there. But case in point, we would not have been able to afford Kachuk and Pulu, Yarvi let alone Dubois, Milano, Olsen, Cardiles. We had to make some moves, and we did. Who knows, it may even work out that we're able to keep the defense that we have together. Time will tell with that, though, but I will be pretty conservative. Kachuk's going to ask for at least $7 million a year to guarantee to the 91 overall, which scares the hell out of me because he needs to have a big year. But anyways, guys, that will do it for this episode. I'm sure it's gone on long enough. It was a huge offseason for us, perhaps the biggest especially with those last-second trades of Saad, Toffoli, Darnell Nurse, and others. It's a very big year for this team. In the next episode, we will see just what they can do. It's sink or swim, and we very well may sink. But we will find out starting in the next episode. Let me know down in the comments below what you think of these moves, and should I make any last-second moves, let me know. There are still a few things we could probably do. Unfortunately, though, we're, we're kind of handcuffed. A lot of teams 
don't have space. They don't, you know, they're up to the contract total or they just don't have the cap space, which is why I made some of the moves we did. I was looking at Nathan McKinnon personally for Brendan Saad. That didn't work out. Chitron was the backup option. But anyways, guys, like I said, let me know down in the comments below what you thought. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button to help support my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series. And I will see you guys in the next episode where I am going to have to trade away quite a few draft picks. And let me know too if I should take a cap uh, uh, draft pick penalty, 11 picks in the upcoming draft instead of 12 because I accidentally picked 13 players. Let me know. I will see you guys next time.